Hello there, so a circle, one more slider, and my map is finished. Let me just name the guest difficulty appropriately, then I'll send it off to the map set host. Should I copy hit sounds for you, he says. Copy is in use a program to extract the hit sounds on his difficulty and stick them on my difficulty's objects. Uh, yeah, sure, I reply, and the map was ranked happily ever after. I can't tell you how many times I've gone through situations similar to this. I've always treated hit sounds like something secondary, something nearly irrelevant to mapping, which in my mind is the act of managing circles and sliders to fit music. For me and tons of other mappers today, doing the bare minimum work for acceptable hit sounds is the norm. Hit sounds are neglected, and that could be because it's hard to recognize the benefits of solid hit sounding. I think starting simple when discussing a topic most people rarely think about may be for the best. What you're looking at here is my first ranked map, a hit sounding disaster. All I knew at the time was that hit sounds should provide feedback because that's what the ranking criteria said, so I added a few bass and snare samples to my map and called it a day. Somehow my low quality garbage map with even lower quality hit sounding managed to reach rank. If I knew the basics of conventional hit sounding though, my map likely would have turned out much different. By conventional hit sounding, I'm referring to the general philosophy that nearly every mapper follows, replicating the music through sound samples. At the bare minimum, which again is what most mappers aim for, there's two ways this is ordinarily done. The first method. After a map is complete, mappers go back through every individual object and listen to what sounds in the song they correlate to. Then depending on what sounds are strongest and repeat in the song, they'll add hit sounds accordingly. Usually, this means hit sounding all drums with similarly matching hit sound samples in the melody line with whistles. As an example, here's me hit sounding a measure of music. Maybe see my old video about the technicalities behind hit sounding if anything you just saw confused you. Anyway, the second method, hit sound specific difficulties. These are pretty similar, they're maps created by listening to a song and placing hit sounded circles where they correlate to important sounds. Then once done, this difficulty's hit sounds are copied to the actual difficulty. So why would anyone use this instead of the first method? It's a bit faster because the repetitiveness of music allows copying and pasting of hit sounded objects, plus a difficulty like this can cover all sounds. That means when copying its hit sounding to other difficulties, there isn't anything missing due to inconsistent rhythm choice. To use a grounded example, this map of mine uses a 1 4th rhythm on one difficulty and a 1 3rd rhythm on another. Both follow the music appropriately in context, however if I copied hit sounds from either difficulty to the other, there would be a lapse in feedback. Hit sound specific difficulties, because they can cover everything, avoid that. Regardless of what method is used though, I think understanding hit sounds on a basic replication level like this has its benefits early on. Going back to my first map, there was one major problem I faced. I... I didn't know how to properly listen to music. I realize how stupid that sounds, but it's legitimately an issue that plagues people new to map creation. There's a lot of sounds to account for in every song coming from different instruments, however when you're just casually listening to music, you don't pick up on most of them. What sticks out is a melody and everything else sort of falls into the background. Listening to music like that is fine normally, but mapping requires adapting more than one instrument, and therefore listening more closely and paying attention to literally everything that's going on. Background layers of music, especially drums, play a huge role in mapping because clicking on sharp, this Distinct sounds is the most satisfying during gameplay. My first ranked map here shows that I didn't know how to listen. The section before the chorus and the chorus itself are mapped in the exact same way because the guitar, the main instrument, repeated the same rhythm. When paying attention to percussion and, well, general ambience too, the sections couldn't be more different. The first section has a not so loud bass drum on each white tick, intended to be sparse and therefore calm, while the chorus has a high intensity double tempo drum beat, more densely packed with strong drum hits. Had I known how to hit sound, I may have mapped these sections with the contrast they deserve. When hit sounding in this super basic way, a mapper is forced to listen to each individual beat in a song and consider its importance. The more someone does this, the better they become at quickly interpreting a song's different layers and choosing satisfying rhythms for their own maps. So my point here, if you're new to mapping and struggle with rhythm choice, try hit sounding. Even though it seems like the last thing you should attempt as a new mapper, it could change your perspective on rhythm and teach you how to listen to music in the way mapping necessitates. Q. 
key part of that point being if you're new to mapping. This type of hit sounding is acceptable and most mappers do it, but it's nowhere near what I'd consider solid hit sounding. To step things up, I find it beneficial to hit sound in ways that complement a map's rhythm directly, rather than passively matching a song. This is best explained through a practical example. Let's take three ranked maps of the same song and compare how they handle hit sounds. Rhythm choice here clearly follows vocals, while hit sounds achieve the bare minimum of representing the song's drums. This results in a somewhat weird feeling during gameplay. A player's clicking doesn't align with the feedback they're receiving. A lot of feedback is on slider ends, and a lot of slider heads are left empty. It's rankable, and it objectively fits the song well, but going back to that clicking distinct sounds feels good idea, it leaves something to be desired. This one is a bit better. While following vocals rhythmically, it hit sounds percussion with a few bits of passive feedback, but at least there's whistle hit sounds on each vocal, that gives players some amount of feedback to work with, something more strong than just no hit sounds to make clicking each vocal more satisfying. This type of hit sounding is also widely accepted because it makes perfect sense. Strong percussion is hit sounded and same with vocals, and they all have their own distinct samples. Even so though, I don't think this is as solid as a hit sounding on the most recently ranked version of this song. This is hit sounding that caters to gratifying gameplay. The map follows vocals rhythmically as usual, but doesn't have a hit sound for every little drum in the song. It has hit sounds for drums on every circle and slider head, but ignores them on slider tails, which are passive and don't really have the most satisfying form of feedback. Pairing that with the way most clickable objects receive strong hit sounds like switches to the normal sample set, even when there is no strong sound in the song specifically correlating to it, the map makes every click feel extremely prominent. The feedback players receive from this map is strong and directly aligns with their actions, which makes for an ultimately satisfying experience during gameplay. How to appropriately do this kind of hit sounding isn't easy to explain though. Unlike the last two maps, there's no obvious objective pattern. There's no rules about only hit sounding actively clicked objects, nor what samples are the best. A lot of it is kind of trial and error by listening to different sound samples attached to different objects and deciding what subjectively sounds best. Consistency is important, as is choosing strong sound samples, but other than that it's largely dependent on a mapper's rhythm choice and a song structure, which you already know, varies between different maps. The more someone experiments with this loose, feedback-based hit sounding, the more clear what works and what doesn't becomes, and that could be how mappers began using hit sounds as a cover-up for more liberal rhythm choice. Notice those drum variations every fourth measure of music, the second of the two being more extreme. You obviously listen to music, you've heard thousands of songs in your life. Generic song structure has taught you to expect that kind of musical change. It's a change signaling the climax of a phrase. Taking that expectation and applying it on a smaller scale allows for tasteful overmapping. I mean, liberal rhythm choice. Excuse me. For example, this is a song made of boring half-beat rhythms. The song here would make for a pretty simplistic map. By playing into expectations with hit sound feedback though, I can include one fourth rhythm that feels natural. Think of this one measure of music as a small scale version of those eight measures we listened to earlier. See where the rhythm density spikes below, these two spots? I can add minor one fourth bits in the spaces that line up here, then hit sound them in a way that makes a second feel more extreme. Like the previous feedback based hit sounding, this requires some trial and error to know what feels right, so mappers often hit sound these maps during the mapping process rather than after. That way, it can be assured that a map's rhythm and hit sounds fade a player's musical expectations. It didn't actually sound that weird, I think. I can then repeat this and enhance it with larger overmap climaxes at more major phrase changes. So like at the end of the fourth measure, I can include a short stream, loudly hit sounded of course, and a more intense stream using similar logic at the end of the next fourth measure. Despite definitely not being in the music, overmapped rhythm that plays into musical expectations like this, thanks to hit sound feedback, can feel appropriate to play. 
one last thing to mention before this is over. This type of hit sounding influencing rhythm choice is by no means a new idea. Like I nearly copied this map's hit sounding pattern from a half decade old Skystar map. Val maps do it too. Nold is widely known for it as well. And they've all got numerous old maps under their belts. In spite of that though, this type of mapping is fairly rare nowadays. Maybe it's because people have a hatred towards rhythms not perfectly following a song, or maybe it's just that mappers don't know how to effectively hit sound and therefore haven't considered this an option. Regardless, most mappers today avoid it, though as of lately, I think it may be receiving less distaste than it has in the past couple years. While still being acceptable in some capacity, overmapping has a negative connotation to it related to not following the music. There is still an arbitrary line to be drawn regarding how much overmapping is okay, avoiding people potentially taking it too far, but sticking to only the boring rhythms most songs provide doesn't stay appealing forever. The arbitrary line shifts based on community values. As it has since Osu's inception, rhythm choice will continue to grow more loose, and I think this hit sounding stuff is likely going to play a relevant role in the progress of general rhythm. So yeah, hit sounding is more important than you may think, and I appreciate the maps that can be interesting and satisfying through more than just plainly visible objects on the playfield. That kind of gets me wondering though. If hit sounds are neglected because it's easier to appreciate mapping through what you see rather than what you hear, will that change with the laser editor? Hit sounds seem like they'll be visible in the timeline there, so people can pay as much attention to them as they do objects, meaning there's a chance that could be the time for a hit sounding revolution. Though, I'm really just speculating at this point. We're done here. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.